welcome friends to this afternoon session of our final day some of you might wonder why i spent so much time greeting you when i come every time i fold my hands and look at all of you i feel like personally saluting your souls i feel like seeing each one of you separately give you a hug that's what i feel but i know we neither have the time nor the opportunity therefore i try to do my best using my best imagination i can so i try to feel that i am that close to you because you look so close to me it's unbelievable it's unbelievable what kind of friendship i feel with you and that's my way of expressing my friendship to you so i can't help it but look at each one of you every time i come that's the kind of feeling one has at my age i also feel you're all like my children some have got white beard also <laughs> a lot of my children with white beards <laughs> only my master was different white beard you see his photo here this is a wonderful opportunity that you came here for a holiday party if you want to have a holiday every day and every night please follow simple tip of mine every day spend some time inside yourself as you spend time outside it's as simple as that try to understand where imagination comes from just because you call it imaginary does not make it imagination what is the source of imagination look into it it's not coming from outside is all coming from inside just searching for this one thing can bring you closer to yourself when you imagine things other than what you're seeing outside that means a fantasy going to another galaxy female meeting aliens for example just giving an example you say i'm meeting aliens what do they look like what do they what do they resemble do they have any resemblance with us pure imaginary but can you imagine something that you have never seen does imagination function on memory does imagination only include what you already seen that you can just remember it and become imagination or can imagination transcend that and give you experiences visions which do not even exist here at all when you look into that part you will find the power of imagination and therefore imagination is not imaginary as we always believed so what is the help that imagination gives us in terms of effective good meditation the help is that what we imagine other than imagining things outside which are attachments our desires and attachments outside come up all the time and we are not imagining them we are remembering them imagination is beyond remembering you just remember what you saw outside is just a memory but when you imagine something which you not connected with outside you are actually entering closer to your own self so imagine when you imagine you are inside you are flying inside you can't fly with this body but you're flying inside you're flying and seeing new places that imagination makes you feel that you can place yourself completely forgetting what's happening to your body and the world outside just fly inside and you'll get so much closer to yourself and you can have a vacation a holiday every day and every night so you can imagine how these enlightened people how they say they have a holiday every day and every night because they live in a world which exists in each one of us but we don't enter it we are so consumed by our attachments outside attachments to people and things who will never go with us it's amazing and sometimes we feel oh these are very dear to us these friends these children are going to be very nice one man tried an experiment he told his doctor i'll pretend i am dead and you come take my pulse and say he's dead then we'll watch what happened to my children around so all the children gathered your dad is very sick so 
the doctor said i am uh, sorry to say your doctor the, your father is very sick so please come all over so all gathered around him and he saw the pulse to go oh, sorry is dead oh we are very sorry we are crying somebody said where is his check book you know <laughs> have you any access to his accounts where did he keep his keys the man heard all those things and he woke up he said now i know what you are interested in we have no idea when we die physically leave the body then we watch what our children are doing big disappointment we think oh they are ours nobody is ours nobody is ours except what is inside we ourselves are our own not anybody outside they are short lived and the greatest surprise comes to us if when if we can go higher than just this inner body and discover we thought they were children they are grandfather this man i thought was my wife was my mother what was i doing <laughs> when you discover such strange experiences you discover what were they thinking of this is just a rotation of forms and bodies that are taking place and i was thinking these are mine like this form these are temporary forms created for a particular show they will mean nothing to you when you go in people have come to me a oh, child has died and now where is he and i check up where is the child i say child is giving lectures to you <laughs> because the child happened to be your father the child happened to be your grandfather who loved you as a grandchild just became a child for this life and left early you are still alive there are so many cases like this all the time so what are we thinking that these relationships all that the relationship is not at all we have had these relationship many times over and they were all different not the same we are having now this is a game going on spend time inside some time i am not saying all the time i am not saying leave your world and go away some people say is it necessary to give up worldly connection worldly duties is it necessary to remain single is it necessary to be celibate is it necessary to all these things to get enlightenment i said not at all i can tell you from my experience that those who do that never get enlightened i find people try to practice celibacy their mind is constantly on celibacy why they are having it <laughs> this is a strange game we are trying to force ourselves to do things which is not natural and our own state is free and natural we are supposed to be free people free and natural and trying to do unnatural things will bring you some peace it only puts pressure on us be natural be absolutely natural there's so much natural stuff inside just go in and see imagination is natural to us the sense of finding out who am i really is natural to us the discovery of the truth truth is natural to us we all want to know the truth why it's natural to us so be natural about these things not force yourself but if naturally you have created a show you have a wife you have children you have a job you do do them as efficiently as you can not oh i am doing my spiritual thing i can't take care of you a person who says that his family will never get enlightened because this will bother him all the time all his life do your duty as best as you can lord krishna says about yoga what is true yoga when he talks of the yoga of karma yoga of sankhya or gyan yoga of bhakti he say yoga karma su kaushalam yoga is doing your action with the utmost skill that you have perform your duties to everybody that comes in your life set up by you with the utmost skill that you have do your very best and then see who you are inside there's no clash between the two how are we creating a clash between a setup that we have come here in a physical body with outside obligations which we can easily fulfill what has that to do with going inside and finding out who you are there's no clash at all 
I would be completely devoid of any knowledge at all if I had if I count all the jobs I have done. I have been busy with jobs all my life. I have just told you the other day I am taking a new job again. <coughs> Does it mean I give up spirituality to take a job? Not at all. Make your job part of the spirituality. It's part of the pattern. It's part of the package. Understand, you have the awareness where these things come from. They are all coming from inside, including your obligations, including your karma, including your jobs. They are coming from inside. Spend time inside and understand the nature of what you are doing outside. That's the beautiful thing. That's why I say, I wish you all <coughs> great vacations all year long, 2019, 2020, 2021. I can keep on counting <laughs> forever. You can enjoy yourself forever if you go inside. Outside, limited time, unfortunately. Outside, very limited time. We are wearing bodies which have very limited time. Can't help it. Nobody has been able to help it. <clears throat> there are some people who question this. If perfect living masters really have that power, that they can do anything, the first thing they should do should be, if they have come into this world to help us, to have a perfect body, never fall sick, because they have control. They should be absolutely healthy and live for several thousand years to help many people. Why do they die like us? They die like us with diseases like our diseases? Why? They don't understand that if a person with a thousand year life was alive today, he could never be our friend. We couldn't have the experience of love which we can have with a human being like ourselves. We don't understand this. That if a perfectly master is not like us, we will not have the friendship that we ought to have with a perfectly master as an ideal friend of ours. That's why perfectly masters are completely like us. Ordinary persons. Extraordinary persons don't give us enlightenment, nor are they our friends. They can speak from a pedestal, and we can worship them from a distance and go to square one again. How many of you have not tried that out? Then we go to very highly evolved people. They talk very high stuff. They quote from many books. They quote from many scriptures. We go there, we listen to them, and we come back and have a fight with our wives and children again. The same day, same thing, back to square one. Nothing happened. Do we not feel the friendship and love for them? An ordinary person coming, just like us, hiding inside what he knows, becomes a friend, then suddenly we discover he's more than that, he's more than that, and ultimately finding he's everything. The friendship never goes away. That is why they appear to us, these perfect living masters, who are very rare, very few, they appear to us as ordinary, completely ordinary people, like us, sometimes more ordinary than ourselves. They appear as ordinary people and they never change their ordinariness while they are in their physical bodies. We see history sometimes and we wonder why Kabir, people are reciting his poems, almost worshipping him. Why he could not give up weaving his cloth and making a small living. He could have done anything in his own life. He had opportunities. He remained a weaver. Why Ravi Das? A perfect living master remained a cobbler. A cobbler whose shop was outside King Pipa's palace. The king's palace he was sitting outside. And the king was his disciple. The king implored him so many times. Please come and move to my palace and live there. And he said, no, my destiny is to mend shoes, to make shoes. I'll keep on making shoes. And he perfect living master. Why did he do that? Because he became a friend. He became a great friend. The king has some feeling, if he's really that great, then 
I should get something really good. People are getting from him. I seem to be too high for him. I am a king, and he's just a cobbler, shoemaker outside. One day, he decided early morning, before anybody wakes up. Otherwise, people wake up. They say, "What are you going to do? I'm going to see a cobbler." Why? You are a king. The king ego was still in his head, but he decided anyhow. Secretly, early morning, three o'clock, he should go and see this master and ask for his blessings and grace. And he got up and he went to Rabi Das, who was by that time repairing a shoe, and he was dipping a piece of leather in water to make it wet before he can stitch it on. The king appeared. Ravidas got up. Your Majesty, what brings you here at this time, three o'clock at night? He said, "I have not come as the king now. I have come as a beggar for your grace. Give me grace." Ravidas, eyes with tears of love for him, said, "Here is some holy water. Drink it." And that dirty water with the leather in it, he just took it like this and drank it. And the king was horrified. The kingship came back in him. He said, "This is the blessing I came for. Little dirty water he's giving me." He tried to do like this, not to offend him. Allowed the dirty water to go in his sleeve of his shirt. Ran back. Called his confidential assistant. Look, I made a mistake today. I went early morning to that so-called cobbler, that master. And I thought he'll give me some enlightenment, some grace. All he did was pour the dirty water from that bowl in which leather was there, and I, I was very careful. I didn't drink it. I allowed it to go, but I noticed it has caused a stain on my shirt. Will you please, right now, early morning, go and wake up the laundry man, the washerman who's on the premises of the palace. Get it cleaned right now, dried, and bring it back to me in the morning, so nobody should know what happened. So the attendant took that shirt with a little stain on the sleeve, and went to the washerman. Oh, he woke up sleepy. He said, "Yes, what early morning you have come at three thirty in the morning?" He said, "This is a very urgent work. This shirt has to be washed, cleaned immediately." So the daughter of that. A washerman, that laundry man, woke up. Dad, what's going on? She said, "I have to wash this shirt." She said, "Give it to me. You are old." She took the shirt, and when she tried to wash it, the stain wouldn't go, and she began to bite on it just to squeeze away the stain. And as she did that, her eyes opened up. She remembered her past life, and she began to tell her dad things about other worlds. He said, "What's happened to you, daughter? That shirt contains something very strange. That shirt and that stain contain something I can't explain." In the morning, the dad told other people. Other washermen came. Other people came in the palace. The little girl is giving spiritual talks. He said, "How is it? How certainly enlightenment has come to this girl?" So the king heard that the washerman's daughter has got it. He said, "Oh my God! This must be my shirt, and I missed out the whole thing. My ego, as a king, did not let me realize what he was giving. So he went to the daughter in the washerman's hut, and he got up. the the wash The daughter bowed her head. King said, 'Don't bow to me. I have come to bow to you.' He said, 'No, I'm not bowing to you as the king. I am bowing to you because you gave me all that I got.'" It was all in your shirt. It's all the sleeve of your shirt. The king felt so remorseful. How he missed this great opportunity. He ran to Ravidas. Please give me a little more of that water. He said, "It's not the water. There's nothing in the water. It's dirty water. It's only sometimes these opportunities come when your desire is strong to find the truth inside, and you reach a perfect master." He looks at your desires. He is moved by it. 
He is a person, human being with compassion and love of such an extent. He wants to give you whatever he can at that time. That was the moment when you came to me at three o'clock in the morning. And this was just an excuse. Now you meditate and do the homework I'll tell you with your mind. In 20, 25 years, you'll get exactly what you could have got in one second. Such are the stories we hear. We don't understand these things. We don't know the whole wealth is already lying inside, each one of us. We just need a little trigger. And who can give a trigger other than a human being who knows what is inside us and is seeing it already? That's a perfect living master. Take full advantage. I know many of you are initiated by perfect living masters. Take full advantage. Don't lose time. Don't think this is just a side business and the worldly obligations are greater. Do the worldly obligations. Perform your duties as best as you can. Do your family, your children, your job, your boss, your employees, whoever are connected with you, with every person, do your duty as efficiently, as skillfully as you can and visit inside what's going on in the world of your imagination, the world of reality that you think is imaginary. And from there, move forward to the whole source of creation, which lies in the causal plane. And if you have a perfect living master in your life, which you can get by seeking that. If you seek and search inside you, perfect master comes automatically. You don't have, you can't find him. Ordinary person, how can you find? What, what is different about him? Just an ordinary person. But you will find, as you associate with that ordinary person, you find more and more and more about that person, about yourself. Ultimately, you start a journey inside and you find that the perfect living master was no other than your own highest self, your own truth. A own truth of your own head, of your own self, appearing outside as a human being. What greater miracle do you want to see? What greater miracle have you achieved? Tell me something better, that you can find your own true self, the highest self, the creative power of the whole creation, universe, sitting not only in your own head, by your own planning, your own creation, outside in the form of a human being, whom we call a perfect living master. Such is the beauty of this creation, beauty of our own arrangement to go back home when we like. Very happy. You are all on the same journey I am. I call you my fellow travelers. We are fellow travelers, same destination to discover our true home where we belong. This is temporary. Take it as temporary. It is temporary. Nobody has made it perfect or permanent. So it's an imperfect world. Wherever the mind has come and divided things, mind's method is analysis. Divide, separate, then see. And it creates all the experiences by separation, division. Soul wants unity, one. Let's get back to that oneness. The big difference in the destinations, big difference in the goals of the mind and the soul. Mind wants experience, separate, further away, more travel, further, fast, fast and away. And soul wants backwards, inwards, where your true home is, go and find the truth about the self. Two different goals. Be the soul in your physical life. Use the mind as necessary. It's a very good computer. Use it well. But don't get used by it. Don't let the artificial intelligence go to that level. Somebody told me, in 30, 40 years, artificial intelligence, AI, will become so strong, they will tell us what to do. I said, they are already telling us what to do. A bigger computer with greater AI is already telling us. We are, it will be no different. Now we are being guided by a computer in the head, then be guided by a computer outside. I was wrong when I said computer outside. They are telling me the computer will also be in the brain cells inside in the future. So there is no difference at all what we are doing now, what will happen then. Only we will think, now one, another guy has come in to sitting inside. Now one is sitting already the mind, a second mind has now come in to talk to us. We are slaves. Be free. Souls are meant to be free, not slaves. Why be slaves when we discover we are slaves? Get rid of it. 
assert your spiritual self, not the ego of the mind. You will enjoy your holidays. I wish you all great holidays. Enjoy. We'll see you in 2019. And bye-bye. Goodbye for now. Thank you.